Well, hello and welcome to episode 266 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch. And today on the menu, we're talking about the latest update to Photoshop version 2025, specifically the April 2025 release, or another way to say it, because there are so many ways to say it these days, this is 26.6.0 release. So this is a fresh release from Adobe and there's quite a few new features here. I have to say I'm rather impressed with all the things that Adobe's added to Photoshop at a release time that they usually don't make massive releases. Now, some of this comes from Photoshop beta. I don't review beta programs as a rule on Photo Kitchen simply because you don't know when they're gonna come out. They don't know, you don't know how well they're going to work in a normal workflow. They are very beta, so I treat them as such and usually don't review them. So there are some beta things that are here. So if you're familiar with beta technology, there might not be a lot of new here. But if you're like me and you wait till the full release, there is a lot new here. First of all, selections have been radically improved. Now, there's several different ways to select in Photoshop to see these improvements. First of all is the good old fashioned select and then use subject from the menu bar. Or you could go to any of the selection tools, object selection, quick selection, or magic wand, and you will see the select subject button in the options bar here. Now, what has changed is AI is now part of selecting a subject. It used to just be machine learning or built into the program. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, and I've already done this so the screen won't appear, you might get a dialogue window that says, do you wish to use this as AI going out to the cloud or do you want to do this on the computer? The minute you select one of those options, that dialogue window doesn't reappear unless you reset Photoshop. But you could access that option several ways, either through the options bar when using any of those selection tools that I just mentioned, you have device, for quicker results or cloud for detailed results. But if you would rather do this through preferences, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it is can be changed through preferences, you could do this through preferences or settings now, image processing, and inside of here at the very top, you have select subject and remove background as options here. And I'm gonna hit cancel because it's redundant because you could do it right through this quick menu. Now I'm gonna set this to device like it would have worked every other time select subject was available in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna simply hit select subject and wait for the marching ants to appear. And if you take note, I will come in and I will just zoom in quite a bit here. There we go. You can see that it selects part of the shadow here. Uh, it's not a perfect selection. Some of the hair is omitted. We have some of the extra shadow here. That certainly is not a great selection. And this is by no means a difficult image. So let's go up to select and do a deselect or command or control D on the keyboard, whatever you wanna do. And then let's switch this to uh, cloud. There we go and hit select subject again. And it does take a little bit longer, but now take a look at the actual results here. See the marching ants? There's no marching ants over the shadows. Nice clean results there. If we come over to this other side, same thing here in between the arm. The hair is a little bit better on the selection as well. So that's a very nice result. Now, there will be those of you who say, oh, we're letting this go up to the cloud and Adobe's seeing the image and what are they gonna do with it? That's a valid concern. Even though that Adobe says they're not doing anything with these images, that is a valid concern. You don't know what they're really doing with the images. It also does require an internet connection and I'm sure the speed of your internet connection will play a role in on how fast the selection comes about. But for me, personal editorial comment, I think this is a heck of a lot better than doing it the old way. This is an image that I shot recently and it was very difficult to select the subject. If we go back to the device and then we say select subject here, you will see that the results are not great. It doesn't even do a very good job of selecting the subject. Even though that the subject is clearly in focus and the background's out of focus, same colors, same tones, Photoshop doesn't know what to do with it. But if we switch back to cloud, as it kind of seems to default automatically, and say select subject again, watch the results much improved. The marching ants will follow the subject around, include the fishing gear, even part of the pole, some of the line here. This is a great improvement. And also, personally speaking, from just editing this image, it's going to save a lot of time. So you have to weigh the pros and the cons with that. But that is one of the major updates to Photoshop select subject. And again, it's easy to change the options by using any of the selection tools or the major new ones, object quick, and of course, the old school magic wand. Select subjects there in the options bar and the drop down is located right next to it.
Moving on in the world of selection, there's been some changes to object selection. So if you come to the object selection tool on your toolbar, you will now see there's a feature called select people. And when you click on this, very much like Lightroom Classic, if you're familiar with the people function of the mask tool in that, you will see people available as uh, a selection here. And if you mouse over, you will get a overlay of color, in this case, kind of a pink magenta, and it will show you the people that are available, in this case, a single person. But when when you click on that person, you will see all of the different components that Photoshop can detect. And as you mouse over those components, you can see which of those areas that Photoshop is referring to. So are the ears selected correctly? Are the eyes selected correctly? You could see those rather easy with this overlay of color. And if let's say you wanted to do something so to the skin tones, let's, so let's do nose, let's do facial skin, upper body, arms, uh, that's about it. Oh, and hands, right? You could see that you have the selection here. And when you say apply, you will get a selection based upon that value that you have there. You'll still see the overlay, but now you have marching ants. And if you wanted to do some sort of adjustment, let's say you wanted to lighten all the skin tones, when you do a curve selection here, we'll switch to move so we'll get rid of that overlay. Uh, I'll hold down the option key so you could see the mask here and you can see how well the mask looks. It's pretty good. And then you could come in and of course do any sort of object selection that you would like, or I'm sorry, adjustment that you would like, brighten up the skin a little bit, what have you, and you could do do a very quick effective selection on parts of people or multiple people in an image. And there might be those of you who say, well, this is something that's existed in Lightroom Classic for a while. Well, let's go back to the first image here and let's go ahead and use the exact same selection. We'll go ahead and do selecting people. And by the way, when it selects people for the first time, it does take a second or two to find those people. So this is happening a little bit quicker because I've done tests on these images. But notice that it detects hair, eyebrows, that there's glasses being worn, there's upper body skin, there's upper clothes, there's lower clothes here. If we jump right back over to Lightroom Classic here and see the mask options, you will see there's just kind of some default options here. It doesn't do eyeglasses. It doesn't distinguish between upper wardrobe, lower wardrobe in this particular case. So it's doing a really good job of scanning the images and finding the parts of the image. So if you need to select a particular piece of wardrobe or eyeglasses or something like that, and it can detect that, you will have a good starting point for your selections in this new version of Photoshop. One of the last major features that's been brought into this new version of Photoshop that's existed in the beta for the while is the ability to adjust colors specifically in the image. Now, if you've ever adjusted colors before, especially if you've used hue or saturation, it's always problematic because you never know, for example, is the reds in the image here or the yellows in the image, are they really in the red channel or the yellow channel? When you manipulate those colors, what are you gonna actually change? Now, this is again, something that existed in the beta and there's a couple of different ways to do it. If you like, the contextual taskbar, when you click on the contextual taskbar, and we'll just bring it up here, up to the center of the screen, and you do adjust colors, what will happen is it will scan the image and then bring that bar down, so let's bring it back up, and it will show you the six most common colors in the image. It, this is what it thinks are the common colors, including an overall master color. And if you click on any of these colors, you will get a drop down for hue, saturation, and lightness, very much like the hue and saturation adjustment layer. In fact, that that's all that you've done. If you look at my layers panel, you will see there's a hue saturation layer here. And if you go over to properties panel, you will see the adjustments for hue saturation here. So if you like the contextual uh, new bar available or that new feature in Photoshop, it's not that new, it's several versions old. But if you like that, you have access to it here. If you're like me and you're very old school, you could always hide the bar and just do this through the properties panel. And I'm going to reset this. Let's just get rid of this hue saturation here, drop it down and create a new hue saturation adjustment layer. There we go. And when you come into the hue saturation, you won't see those same colors again. You'll see just the traditional red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. But if you do the drop down and switch it from default to prominent colors, now what you'll see is those exact same colors as we saw beforehand. Now you could click on any of those colors. Let's click on this color here, and then we'll move the hue slider around and we'll see that it is going to adjust most of the yellow sweatshirt, but also maybe just a little bit of the fence 
fence line here. Let's crank up the saturation so you could really see this. And you could see how the colors are being changed. Now, is this any better than it was beforehand as far as selecting it? You can make the case yes, you can make the case no, but it definitely is a little bit easier, especially if you're brand new to Photoshop and you're not comfortable with hue saturation because it can be very intimidating. You have this here, it's certainly a little bit easier to use. And if you factor in the ability to use the object selection tool and come into this new object selection tool, let's do select people. Make sure the background layer is selected, always have the right layer selected. Come into here and let's do upper close. So now we could do upper close here and say apply. And now we have this and let's just do another quick hue saturation adjustment layer. Let's get rid of the old one. Let's create a new one. There we go. And now with that layer selected, we could come back into the adjustment and switch to prominent colors. There we go and I'll hit switch out of my tools there so we get rid of the overlay. And I could come into here and I could brighten up that sweatshirt a little bit and maybe even change its color a touch. But do take note, it's not perfect. It didn't select a little bit on the collar here, so that's gonna involve some additional masking work. So it's not perfect. There is still some additional work that needs to be done. Uh, selected mask is gonna have to be brought into this, but you have the ability to do better color adjustment or at least a little bit more straightforward color adjustment using adjust color or a hue saturation in there. You also have the better selection tool with obs selection as well as using select subject and using either the cloud or local access for that to speed up your workflow. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have, thank you very much for your support and share this with anybody who maybe just downloaded the latest version of Photoshop and they're curious what the update really has for them and their workflow. So until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.